Okay, to set the scene a little bit, uh, people have known for decades that there are serious human rights abuses in North Korea. But prior to 2014, there was a debate about how widespread those abuses were and whether defector accounts might be exaggerated. Now that changed with this watershed report. The UN Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in North Korea conducted an extensive, thoroughly documented investigation and issued this report. The Commission of Inquiry in 2014 found that North Korea was engaged in systematic, widespread, and gross human rights violations amounting to crimes against humanity. The Commission also found that these violations were being conducted under the effective control of Kim Jong-un. Exactly what's happening in North Korea can be analyzed and discussed, but no one can now doubt that widespread human rights violations continue. The Commission of Inquiry report is still relevant, but it's now over five years old. So how do we know what's happened since? Now, the State Department issues an annual country report on human rights. The latest report on North Korea came out this month on March 11th. The Trump administration has been muted in its criticism of human rights in North Korea since the diplomatic summitry that began in 2018. But the State Department's new report is as tough on North Korea as were the 2018 and 2017 reports. That has not changed. Okay, this is the summary paragraph from the State Department's March 2020 report on human rights in North Korea. I'm not going to read it all to you, but you can see just skimming it that uh, it confirms the Commission of Inquiry's findings of systematic state-directed human rights violations that continue of all sorts. It seems to me that we're in a situation where we can both walk and chew gum. Uh, we should be able to focus on the problem of healthcare in North Korea, which is a major issue and which is something we ought to be dealing with. But at the same time, it seems to me that we ought to be able to look at human rights and focus on human rights and give attention to that issue as well. I would argue that there's a connection between the two. Uh, one of the real problems in North Korea is lack of information, which is a human right. People in North Korea ought to be able to have access to information. And if they're going to have a good sense of the nature of the healthcare system and how to improve it, how to make it more functional, we need to have information about what's going on and that information needs to be available. For the past 30 years, the North Korean system, the North Korean public health system has been in shambles. Resources have been concentrated on those areas that are regarded by the regime as critical to its own survival, the military, nuclear weapons, missiles, keeping the elites happy through access to goods imported from the outside world. Uh, the, uh, the, the public health and the health security of the people of North Korea has been neglected. This is a picture taken in the aftermath of Typhoon Lion Rock um, a few years ago in North Korea. These men are involved in post-disaster recovery outside Pyongyang, North Korea. Do you notice anything striking about this picture, Mark and Bob? There's not much equipment. There's no machinery there. Absolutely. No tools. You don't see an excavator, a bulldozer. Goodness, not even a shovel. shovel. Each men are empty-handed. Oh. This is how the regime invests in the welfare and human security of the people of North Korea. There is no investment. While the system is equipped to uh, keep people under control, oppressed, uh, and maintain the regime in power, one tremendous vulnerability of this system is that for that very reason, it is not equipped to deal with a natural disaster. As far as healthcare, the, the items that are essential for healthcare in North Korea should be allowed to go in. And in fact, there are indications they are going in. Uh, the International Federation of the Red Cross, for example, was allowed to ship uh, 10,000 training kits and other issue, uh, other materials that are useful for the North Koreans in handling the COVID e epidemic.
Well, uh, certainly, uh, first and foremost, uh, we will have to see whether North Korea is treating this as a real crisis or as a PR opportunity. What the regime is trying to do is to position itself where it can say that it did try very hard to prevent this crisis. For as long as they're dealing with an event that can be described as a, a natural disaster, the regime of North Korea does not regard it as potentially posing a direct threat to, uh, to its legitimacy within North Korea. Unfortunately, uh, the administration has taken the point of view that the only way we're going to make progress with North Korea on the nuclear issue is if we back off on human rights. I'm not convinced that that's the case. And the only way that we're going to put pressure on the North Korean regime is if we increase the access to information, if we put pressure on the North Koreans uh, for the human rights violations that they're guilty of. So I would argue that, uh, in fact, uh, we have to, again, walk and chew gum at the same time. We need to press the North Koreans on human rights. At the same time, we need to work with them and, and cooperate with them to try to make progress on, uh, on denuclearization, on uh, reducing the missile threat. Uh, my sense is that there's a greater attention to human rights, uh, likely uh, from a Biden administration. And in part, that's because I think with a Biden administration, there's it's less likely to be the very personal kind of approach uh, that Trump has taken. The, the Trump administration policy is largely based on, on the personal relationship between Trump and Kim Jong-un. In my view, regardless of the result of the presidential election, uh, the human rights issue in North Korea will be again elevated. Uh, should President Trump be reelected, I think it would be reasonable to expect a harder line approach to North Korea. As Bob said, uh, should we see a Biden presidency, it is likely that we will see a, a human rights component included in uh, in our policy toward North Korea. So again, one in this line of work, North Korean human rights, human rights in general, but in particular North Korean human rights has to be an optimist. I, I have to be optimistic regarding the future. Uh, it is very important that in democratic countries, one should talk to elected representatives to remind them that this is an issue that continues to matter to the people of the United States, to the people uh, living in, uh, in other friendly and fellow democracies. And I would ask everyone who has tuned in today to continue to be an ambassador of North Korean human rights. We need your help. Please spread the word.